Lord, I need your rain to put out this fire. I'm tired of the pain. That's why I need you to pour out on me. Extinguish the flames and save me from myself. Lord, I need your rain to put out this fire. Australians are fighting for their lives as bushfires rage towards towns across three states. Victoria is in the grip of a crisis. Victoria's southeast region is hellish. This is just one of so many fires that continue to burn. And it has engulfed the entire bush. The number of fires and the size of the fire edge is unprecedented. Homes and lives are under threat. With dozens of communities being evacuated. And the sheer scale of it is staggering. Never before have we seen bushfires like this. Just a foretaste of what we're expecting in the next couple of days. For another wave of dangerous weather. Wairiwa, a small town in East Gippsland, was hit hard. He escaped Sarsfield just before flames ripped through. Lake's entrance was a ghost town. Many will be shifted out of Malakuta via military helicopter. These cruel and unrelenting fires burned across the state. First it was yellow, it went to an orange, then a red and then pitch black. The roads to safety are gridlocked as locals and tourists flee. Too late to leave, we have to seek shelter at the local hall. 4,000 people are still stranded and the death toll keeps rising and rising. The remains of hundreds of homes and properties lay eerily quiet across thousands of hectares. As the dust settles around some of the area's worst hit, incredible stories of survival have begun to emerge. It started coming through here and I've never seen anything or heard anything like it. 200 foot high, as wide as you can see. It was just like a wall of fireflies coming at you. I realised how serious it was when all the smoke started coming through. The fire won't discriminate on who you are, where you are, or what you are. If you're in this road, it's going to eat you. It was like bombs were going off, but it was just the trees exploding around us. We were worried because there was just a big circle of like the fire was like joining up and it was going to like lock heaps of people in that stayed. Embers the size of 10 and 50 cent pieces just bouncing off the house and sheds. Doesn't matter how prepared you are, when that sort of catastrophe is coming at you, it's, uh, it's monumental. Lots and lots of different feelings. Because it was Christmas, I was supposed to just spend it with my family, but because of the fires, we had to leave. And then that's when it got really bad. The fires started in uh, November, so we were fighting them then. They retreated into the bush with the wind, and then when they came back, it was uh, with a vengeance. My name's Craig Calvert. I'm the sixth generation dairy farmer. I have four girls and a wife, so they'll be the seventh generation. We're in a small place called Wisely in East Gippsland, Australia. Craig and I were milking our cows and we could see the plumes of smoke um, developing over behind me. We literally turned the pump off, quick clean and we raced up here and it was all a go. You could see it coming, it was worrying. 
Uh, we sat there, we could see it was coming around about 30, 40 kilometres an hour. It was just roaring at us. The way the wind was going, we were in direct line, so we knew it was either going to be close or, or it was going to hit us. So, yeah, it makes you pretty anxious. And, and seeing that plume of smoke on how big it was, you knew we were going to be in for hell. There were so many different sounds, but you could just hear explosions and helicopter sirens and firefighter trucks and just people yelling everywhere. You know, Craig said, are you sure you want to be here? I'm going to yell at you and tell you, tell you off and tell you what to do. And I said, yes, I need to be here and help you. The least I could do is just milk the cows while he did what he had to do with the fire or whatnot. Everyone had to leave and just mum and dad had to stay there. It was really, really upsetting and really worrying. My biggest fear was probably mum and dad's safety because if the house burnt down, we could rebuild the house, but you can't rebuild a person. The issue with fires and when a fire front comes and it's a catastrophic day and all the rest of it, you really haven't got time to sit down and analyse things intently. You're just, you're bouncing off that last decision that you made and that's going putting out that fire over there and oh no, this one's picking up, I've got to go and do that one there. You've just got to be where the heat at the moment is. When it came over the gullies, it was jumping, oh, I don't know, probably five, six hundred metres, flying over the hills and splashing onto the other side of the hill and, and take off again. Where my grandmother's house was, it actually got hit from about four or five different ways. I thought I was going to die. I really did. I've never experienced anything like that in my life. It was scary because we've always seen that house as our home and to see it on fire was just, it was just scary. We didn't think we had a place to live. I got seven hours sleep in a week. You just, yeah, run ragged. Just, yeah, just drain.